2005 season, we're, we're the number one seed. We've got a, a great team, a team really without any weaknesses. We've got home field advantage. Everyone is saying it's our year. We end up falling behind to the Steelers in our first round game. We march back. We've got a chance to tie the game up and go into overtime. And uh, Mike Vanderjet's our kicker, extremely accurate guy, never misses a big kick, and he misses. Pittsburgh goes on to win the Super Bowl. And now you kind of hear it from everybody. Well, the Colts are never going to win one. They've had all these teams that are, are really good, but something's missing, and that window of opportunity is going to close up on them. I can remember thinking, man, as good a team as we had, if we don't win it now, we may never win it. And I'm going to have to be OK with that. I think you can glorify the Lord in every circumstance. How you respond to failure, how you respond to disappointment, uh, says a lot more than how you do in successes. God has taken some unexpected things in my life uh, over and over, uh, and, and really, I think, tried to find out if I was gonna stay with Him, or if I was ever gonna get to the point where I say, this is too much, I'm gonna go my own way. I started coaching when I was 25 years old. And probably by the time I'd been an assistant coach for 10, 11 years, the word was getting out, this guy might be a good head coach. I started to interview for, for head coaching jobs, but everyone was looking for that stereotypical coach, looking for the guy who was gonna demand perfection from his players, who was gonna show that emotion and, and everything that they expected to see in a, in a head coach. And that wasn't me. How much does this mean to you? How much are you prepared to sacrifice to, to lead his team? And, and what's important to you in, in life? And you know what the, the, the man wants to hear, but it's not really what's in your heart. I'm gonna give you a lot. I'm, I believe I'm gonna deliver you a championship, but no, the, the team is not gonna be the most important thing. When I was called to interview at Tampa, I told Lauren, we're not gonna get this job. I don't know anybody there, I have no connections. And so when I got the job, I said, you know what, we wanna win a Super Bowl, and I believe we will. I wanna do it the right way. I wanna do it so that our young men are people that the community is gonna be proud of. I, I wanna do it in such a way that we're doing the right things with our families, and it's gonna be a win-win situation. I believe it can be done and I believe it can be done here. I came down feeling like, hey, this is where God wants us. We're gonna win. Everything's gonna be great because this is God's plan. It's not my plan. That's, to me, one of the hardest things in, in life, when you have an idea of the way things are gonna go, uh, what you hope for, what you dream about, what you pray for, and it doesn't come through. Uh, that's when it's easy to get disappointed with God. Why didn't it work? Why didn't it uh, pan out the way I thought it would? And it was one of the biggest disappointments in my life because I did feel like the Lord had brought me down to Tampa. And I had to realize that it worked out. It just didn't work out the way I had planned it. I didn't know at the time when I got fired uh, what I was supposed to do. Um, was I supposed to look for something in Tampa outside of football, or was I supposed to look for another job, another city? And Jim Irsay, the owner of the Colts, called me. And he said, we're making a change at, at head coach with the Indianapolis Colts, and you're the guy that I want to be our coach. I believe in all the things that you believe in. We want to do things the right way. We want to win, but win with the right kind of people, and you're the guy to lead us. And that 
that was a message that I really needed to hear at that point. My favorite passage in the Bible is um, where Christ says, what would it profit a man to gain the whole world but forfeit his soul? And with 31 years in the National Football League, I've seen that a lot. And so to me, that was the thing that I always wanted to, to tell my players. Um, don't, don't put this game first. Don't, don't make football everything in your life. How we relate to each other, how we live, uh, what you have in your heart for eternity, uh, how you respond to the Lord, that's, that's the most important thing. This game will take care of itself. Even though we, you know, for four or five years had those bitter disappointments at the end of each year, I never gave up. Uh, it wasn't to the point where I said, hey, we can never win this thing, but I, I got to the point where if that is what God has in store, it would be a bitter pill to swallow, but uh, I'm going to be okay with that. through a lot and, and our slogan by that time was it's our time um, you know those disappointments were in the past but now it's our time and we got to seize the moment and and we did that amazing thing in the locker room Super Bowls are, are so different as soon as you win the celebration starts you have a ceremony out on the field it maybe takes 40 minutes to get everybody back together many of our players were just waiting they said coach we've got to finish this one like we have every other game. We've got to have the team prayer. And we asked that uh, the reporters shut their cameras down and let us pray. And I was so proud of the guys for, for hanging in there and saying, this is what we want to do. We want to honor the Lord in this victory. And uh, we did that. One photographer didn't honor our wishes. He took a picture of it, but that picture went all over the internet, went all over, and it was really a, a great tribute to what that team had in mind of, of putting the Lord first, even at the Super Bowl. Every decision I make in life, I'm gonna make it through the lens of Jesus Christ. I'm gonna put him out there first, and my own feelings, my own thoughts, my own desires are gonna be second. It's that simple, and if we do that, Christ promised that he would come into our lives, he'd be our head coach, and he'd guide us to, to that victory, that ultimate victory. I'm Tony Dungy, and I am second.